Hi, uh, I'm Jayant and I'm an engineer at Mixpanel on the query infrastructure team. Uh, today I want to show you how to use one of our newest features called multi-touch attribution. Uh, so let's talk about the problem statement first. Say you're a SaaS company and you're looking to figure out potential drivers of important conversion metrics like upgrades. You could have users coming in from different sources uh, and you want to figure out how to assign credit, credit to these different sources. A simple way to do this would be to give full credit to the first source that brought the user to your website, and this is called first touch attribution. Uh, for example, say a user came into your website from a blog post they saw on LinkedIn, and then searched on Google for some documentation, and subsequently they upgraded. First touch attribution would give full credit to this user's conversion to LinkedIn, since that, that's how the user came to your website. Uh, but first touch attribution might not be enough. You may want to assign partial credit to multiple touch points done by this done by users in their journey. In this example, you might want to assign 50% credit to both Google and LinkedIn. And what multi-touch attribution does is gives you the power to choose how to divide up credit. This can be useful in a variety of situations, such as guiding your marketing ad spend or understanding what features your customers use before upgrading. The main takeaway is that multi-touch attribution lets you figure out potential drivers of your key conversion. Let's dive a little bit deeper into how exactly you can use this feature in your reports. Uh, I'm going to open up a mix panel uh, report, a mix panel demo on the e on an e-commerce data set. Uh, let's open an insights report and add number of purchases as our key conversion. Uh, so we see that there have been about 5,000 purchases in the last 30 days. Now let's say you wanted to figure out where to spend your money on paid advertisements. And the way you want to do this is to determine which sources are contributing to these purchases. You'd click here to add a breakdown and then select the new attributed by button and from the list of properties, let's use Uteam source for now. This automatically does a few things. Uh, it sets a default look back window as well as picks the last touch attribution model. Uh, the look back window determines how far to look back in a user's journey to find touch points to give credit to. You can always edit this by clicking on this and changing the number and you can also use sessions instead of days. Uh, Let's switch this to a percentage view and uh, look at the results. So we see about 30% of purchases are driven organically, about 20% come from Google ads and the rest come from different sources. You can also use a line chart to see the trend in your data. Uh, so for example, we see how many purchases have been organic over time in the last 30 days. Uh, you can also compare the results between different models. Uh, let's switch to a table view to make this easier and click on the model here to switch the attribution model. For example, J-shaped attribution uh, assigns partial credit to multiple touch points, but biases towards giving more credit to recent touch points. Uh, so you can switch this to see the results according to a J-shaped attribution, and you can also compare results across different attribution models. So for example, we see that uh, J-shaped attribution and last touch attribution do divide up credit in different ways and it is completely up to you to figure out which attribution models work best for your particular use case. You also have control over what gets considered as a touch point. Uh, you can add filters by clicking this menu and excluding certain sources. Uh, I'm just going to exclude YouTube, nothing against YouTube, we all love YouTube. Uh, it's just an example for this uh, report. And so now we see that YouTube no longer gets assigned any credit and all of the credit for these conversions gets distributed amongst the other sources. Uh, in addition to number of conversions, you may also care about the total amount of revenue that is brought in by these conversions. Uh, you can change your conversion metric to sum up revenue from all of these purchases. So instead of totals, you would want to use the sum of revenue. And now what uh, this report is showing you is what percentage of revenue was brought in from different uh, sources. Uh, I've been using source as an example throughout this demo, but you can also do this with any other property such as UTM medium. Uh, you can also use custom properties to create combinations of these properties. Uh, so let's do something like source plus medium. Here you would just define any sort of rules to combine your properties. So I'm just going to uh, combine these uh, two properties. Uh, so now we can see that there are different combinations of source plus medium that is bringing in different amounts of revenue. 
Uh, you can also use uh, custom properties to build a channel classifier by using logical rules of your choice to categorize sources into different channels of interest. Uh, okay, that completes the demo. Hopefully that was useful in learning about the different capabilities of this new feature. Uh, the big question is, do you need any changes in your implementation to, to start using this? Uh, and the good news is no, as long as you're already tracking the right properties, you can do this ex analysis in Mixpanel, even on historical data. You can read more about setting up in our help talks. Uh, here we just demoed a marketing use case, but as we talked earlier, attribution has many applications, whether it is to figure out which cu features customers use before upgrading or which calls to action are driving the most purchases. We hope you enjoy this new analysis capability in Mixpanel. And as always, please feel free to reach out if you have any feedback or questions. Thank you.